Hey everyone and welcome to the fourth lecture of this series. In this video I'm going to solve an example to show you how to assign values to each contribution. Imagine I came up with an amazing idea to make smart shoes. I spent 600 hours of my time and let's assume my hourly rate is 100 bucks plus another 10k on documentation and legal cost. So the theoretical value for my IP is 70k. Then I decided to go further and start a company. So I spent another 3k on incorporation and as no reimbursement is expected, I treat this as cash and multiply it by 4 to find a value as we discussed in the previous lecture. So the value is translated to 12k. I also spent another 5k and bought some business enabling equipment. Again, I treat this as cash and multiply it by 4 to find a value. I also hire another experienced software developer to build a killer demo. As his experience level is similar to me, we agree on 100 bucks for the hourly rate. I work full time in the office over the next month, so the relative value for my time is 4 weeks multiplied by 40 hours per week and multiplied by my hourly rate. So the value for my time is 16k. The other grunt is busy with another project and works part time for me. So she gets 8k for her time contribution. My total contribution adds up to 118k and her total is 8k. Now let's see the percentage of equity by the first month for both of us. The total contribution is 126k. So my share is 94% and her share is 6%. Just remember, this is not an actual equity. It's a promise to issue equity when the time comes. You might say 6% is too much, but she joined me at the very beginning when I desperately needed help and she accepted the risk of not getting paid if the company fails. This must be rewarded in a fair way. It's easy to ask people to join you if you are running a successful company like Tesla as you can simply pay people their market value but not so easy for very early stage startups. In the next month I kept working full time so my time contribution increases to 32k and my total becomes 134k. The other grunt is super busy with her other job and just spent one week in the company. So her contribution is 4k and her time value goes up to 12k. So her total is then 12k. In this month, I decided to hire another sales grunt who is pretty young but he believes he can get some sweet deals for us. As he's junior, we agree on 50 bucks for his hourly rate plus 5% commission on any sell. Over the next month, he worked full time for the company. So his time contribution is 8k and because of his hard work we get 100k deals with Nike. So 5% of that translates to 5k but as he's very ambitious he decides not to get the cash out of the company and get equity instead. In this case he will be rewarded by a factor of 2 and his commission translates to 10k pi. You might ask what if he gets the cash and puts it back in the company. In this case his money will be rewarded by a factor of 4 not 2. But this shouldn't be allowed in the company. Any money that is generated by the company and paid to the employees cannot be rewarded similar to the outside cash. So if you pay commission or wage to early employees so they can pay rent or something it can be reinvested by a factor of 2, not 4. So his total contribution is 18k. Now let's find the percentage of equity for each grunt. The total contribution is 164k. So I ended up with 82% of the company. You might ask how come my percentage goes down from 94 to 82%. That's fair, but remember now we are talking about a much bigger pie as the company has now traction and sells. The second grunt gets 7% and the sales guy 
get 11% as a big reward for his hard work. Now, let's say we decide the chemistry between us is good and we want to keep working in the company as three co-founders. We can use dynamic equity to keep paying ourselves over the upcoming months. But sometimes you need to hire consultants or freelancers to do some small projects for you. If you cannot pay them in cash, you need to give up more pie. But as these people are not actively involved in the company, they are called absentee owners and the equity that they have is called debt equity. If you have to give up some debt equity, make sure you have a buyout option in your contract so you can buy back their pie at a fair price. If you have too many absentee owners, they might represent a big chunk of the ownership and this will cripple your company down the road, especially during fundraising. Okay, that's it for this lecture. In the next video, I'm going to cover what's going to happen when someone like co-founder leaves the company. Thanks a lot for watching this video and see you soon.